Welcome guys to another edition of Pillow Talk. We are here at Sundance in the Airbnb house. And if you're here, you should stop by. 596 Main Street. We've got free coffee. There's hotty toddies brewing up right now. But more importantly, we are talking to some of the best and most creative filmmakers here at Sundance this year. Joining me is Jonathan Monahan. He's competing in the New Frontier art category with his film, Escape Pod. Jonathan, get to bed with me, buddy. <laughs> nice. Hello. Things that you wouldn't be allowed to do growing up. No, I do every night. Oh, okay. As like an adult. Yeah. But that's because there's no parents around. Right, there's right no parents around. We yeah. can get away with this. Um, I'm basically a big kid. So, first of all, can you explain the category New Frontier Art? It's okay. not like your typical film. It's not right? your typical film. So, New Frontiers is a program that Sundance does every year, and they showcase works that don't quite fit into a cinema, but they're still moving image works and they're still cinematic. So a lot of the works that you could see at New Frontier uh, are VR, virtual reality, or uh, films that kind of really don't really work in a cinema, right? In a movie theater. So here's a little taste. Here's the trailer for Escape Pod. That's right. And just kind of like explain to everybody. So what what this is exactly? So one of the pieces installed at New Frontiers is my film, Escape Pod. And Escape Pod's a 20 minute long computer animated film where we follow a golden deer through different environments. But there's no cuts or edits and there's no real start or stop. You can kind of come into it at any time. So it, it's, uh, it's something a little different. It's kind of on this border between art and, and a film. Um, there's been a lot, of, uh, a lot of different ways to describe your work. Okay. Very colorful ways to describe your work. Yeah, Is that yeah. fair? So, uh, psychedelic. Yeah, it's psychedelic. It's um, surreal. Surreal. Uh, sometimes it's funny. How would you describe it? Uh, I think it's thought provoking. I think that's the best word, and that's why I do this. You know, I try and get people to think, uh, try and move people out of their comfort zone a little bit, and uh, do something that challenges them uh, visually and intellectually. And um, so, in one of the scenes in Escape Pod, we travel through a duty free shop in the clouds in the sky. And people might think, like, what does that mean? Like, why is there a duty-free shop in, in the sky? And it's kind of this uh, strange, you know, vision of heaven in a way. So it's something that's, uh, so with all my work, I, they don't make a lot of sense initially, but I think if you spend some time with it and start to think about it, uh, it might start to make some more sense. I think if you walk into this, seeing this for the first time, you're like, what the hell? But right. if you look at your whole body of work, right. There's definitely an aesthetic there. Right. It's something that you've been working many years Absolutely, to yeah. kind of fine tune. So take me to the beginning, how you kind of set yourself on this path with this type of style and this type of look. Right. Well, I, I, I've always liked sci-fi growing up as a kid, science fiction movies. I've always watched, played video games. And so when I make my films, I try and kind of have them with this strange, sleek video game look or like a sci-fi look to them. Right. But the imagery is not something you would find in video games or sci-fi movies. There's also things like Baroque architecture, these mythical animals. So uh, it's this really kind of combination of references from all these different uh, you know, kind of inspirations. Uh, we absolutely want your questions. So if you're watching this, right. write something in the comment section. Uh, if you want to say something, if you have a question, we want to hear from you, write it, and uh, we will ask that right here, live on Pillow Talk. Um, let's talk about this deer guy, this right. golden deer character. Um, so, so the film, Escape Pod, there's no humans, right? There's no humans. Uh, this is kind of a, a post-apocalyptic? Po yeah, it's a post-apocalyptic landscape. Okay. And uh, the only thing we, that's alive is this golden deer, and we kind of follow him. and. In mythology, the deer always represents the unobtainable. It's something people are always trying to re, uh, to go after, but they can never quite grasp it. They can never quite get it. And so it's kind of a metaphor for the way we pursue wealth and power. And uh, so there's also a lot of imagery of wealth and power in the. In and the well, that's something that we see a lot in your work too. I mean, is that a political statement? Is that you know, obviously it reflects the times right yeah, now. Yeah, it reflects the times. I'm trying to get us to think. You know, I'm trying to get my audience to think. And uh, I think a viewer of one of my worst could extract multiple meanings or multiple political viewpoints. But I think it's important to 
get the, the thinking process going to, you know, when you get out of the comfort zone, you're able to get a different perspective on things. And that's what I'm shooting for. You worked, you, you did some speaking at the U.S. State Department? Yeah, they invited me out <laughs> once, yeah. Now, does that come in the form of an email or a phone call? It How came in the it? form of an email, actually, yeah. And do you, now, when you get this email from the State Department, right, do you right, think, right. wait a minute, if I click on this, like, my computer will be infected with porn? Right, or maybe I'll go on a watch list or something, I don't know. Right. Like, uh, how do you make sure that that's not a prank uh, or a fake well, email? No, the email had uh, a .gov, so I'm assuming, you know. Oh, well, .gov says right. super legit. Uh, yeah, I guess so, right? Yeah. Right. It, um, they, as long as they didn't ask you to, like, transfer money to right, some oil no air in Nigeria. Yeah, there was no Nigeria, no. So you're good there. I was good there. But it was interesting. What they wanted me to do was they wanted me to talk to the youth in Bahrain, which is a kind of a, you know, a, a state that's, you know, a little volatile. And what they wanted me to talk about and wanted me to interact with the kids with was to show young people how you could use technology creatively. So there's all this energy there, volatile energy. And you know, what, part of what I was doing was trying to show these people that you could have a, an output for this energy creatively using technology. So I brought over 3D printing, I showed them animation, I got them doing 3D printing and stuff like that. Um, so technology, you know, it's it's the, the creative technologies are a way to really, um, I think, change the world potentially, you know. So, I mean, God, that's got to be a, a life-changing moment for kids. When you're it was, showing, it was I mean, for me. Like, I haven't even seen a 3D printer in real life Right, yet. yeah. Why not? Like, you should. Insane. I'll show you some. Yes, please. Uh, not in bed, though. <laughs> of course. Um, but, no, it's uh, it was for me. And uh, when I first, I played a lot of video games as a kid, but I think my life-changing moment was when I discovered that, you know, you can make video games. Right. You know, you could have access to the tools necessary to create these graphics and to create these interactive worlds and things like right. that. And so that was a life-changing experience for me, and I, right. and I went from a, a consumer to a producer. Uh, we have a question. Great. Oh, yeah. my God, a question. I know. Producer Karen. Sorry about that. All right, so your movie doesn't have a beginning or end. So the question is, how long do I need to watch it before I see it repeat? Oh, right. Well, if you, you'll see it repeat after about 20 minutes, but so, lots of people watch it and they don't realize it's been repeated. So some people are sitting there for 40 minutes and they don't realize that they've seen uh, the film loop. And you, there's there's also something else that you do. You kind of like to drop Easter eggs yeah. in your stuff, right? Sure. So you kind of need to watch it a couple times to right. to find those Easter eggs. W what are people looking for? Well, you'll see some uh, small. Uh, logos on things. Uh, you'll see maybe some books with names on it. You'll see, uh, so there's a lot of small details and one of the reasons why I do this is because I have to make everything in this virtual world. You know, it's a computer animation so I have to define every little detail in the piece and so sometimes I have fun, you know, and, sure. and put in these little uh, treats or Easter eggs, yeah. How long does it take you to make a 20 minute film like that? This piece, I was animating and working on this piece for about four months. Okay. And then it took a couple months to render. Right. You know, the category that you're in is a very forward thinking, right. you know, edge of technology category. What are some of the trends that you are seeing? What, you know, how are artists pushing the limits right now, especially with technology? Because right. that, that's kind of like the hot new space in art right now. Well, New Frontiers is so exciting because everybody there is bringing a different approach to these new technological capabilities. So they're all more or less the same kind of technology, they're all more or less the same tools, but the approaches are completely different and that is what's so amazing to see. And I think we're at a time where uh, artists are really experimenting and trying to uh, uncover what's possible with, with these new tools, whether yeah. it's VR, whether it's animation or whatever, you know. What, what, what is the technology or, or what is a trend that you're seeing right now that really excites you? Well, I think, uh, I think the biggest trend right now would be maybe VR. It's super huge right now. And like I was saying, like, you go there to New Frontiers and you look at what people are doing with VR. The, the technology is, might be the same, but the content is all so different and so varied. And that's really exciting to see. Yeah. All right, so I want to end our interview. I have five questions. Uh, that I want to ask, you know, that I'm okay. asking all the artists. Okay. Right? 
So the first one is when you need to get into a creative space. Okay. Okay. What do you do or where do you go? Uh, I like to travel. So okay. I like to go to a, a kind of a, a place I've never been to and just kind of wander and get lost. Okay. And then I, uh, I'll sit in a cafe with my sketchbook or something. That's where most of the ideas come from. Okay. Um, what's the biggest creative killer for you? What just kills the vibe? Um, I would say having to uh, talk too much. <laughs> like this interview. Like this interview, yeah. <laughs> We're talking way too much. Yeah, because when you're trying to, uh, you know, promote your work, it gets a little, uh, it's fun and it's great. I'm having a great time here. Yeah. But uh, so, so that's not always compatible with the creative process um, for me. What, in 2016, what are some stories that you think should be told or will be told? What are some of the, oh, the wow. trends in storytelling that you foresee this year? Well, uh, I think... Uh, technology I think we're being more and more te technology is everywhere and it has so much potential but if we're if the artists aren't bringing the right perspective to it uh, I think w as a culture and society we might get lost in the technology and so I think being able to be creative with this is going to be a big trend that we're going to be seeing I think we're going to be seeing more issues surrounding our relationship with technology and what's your biggest fear when you're making your art uh, my biggest fear is that nobody will care because I'm doing this. I don't want to, I'm not doing this to make money, really. I'm not doing this for fame. I'm doing this because I want people, I want to give people a meaningful experience. Escape Pod is the film. Escape Pod. And New people Frontier. can see it now. You can see it right now if you're here at Park City. Can you see it online? You can see clips of it online. You can see clips of it. If you want to see the full online. thing, the full experience, you got to come to Park City. Book your ticket. No excuse. John Monahan. Thank, Thank you, you so sir. much, buddy. Okay. I appreciate it. Thanks for hanging out in bed with okay, me. Okay, I'm going to take a nap. Good night. <laughs>